And welcome back everyone, welcome back to Let's Play CSI. <coughs> okay, that didn't get quite to plan. Don't do stupid voices. I'm sure I've told myself that before in the video. But anyway, last time we completed case two, Light My Fire, along with Sarah Seidel, I believe her name is. I think it's Seidel. I know it's Sarah. Anyway, we completed that. Turned out it was just a guy trying to get an insurance claim. There's a few different things going on. It's been a little while since I've played. And uh, as you can see, this is a start over. I'm actually having to re-record this. I got about halfway and then it was some uh, recording issues. So, yeah, so the first, this, this case might be pretty quick because, you know, I already did the first half. Let's start over and do it again. Patrol Officer James Garvey has been murdered. As a new CSI, this is your first cop killing. Unfortunately, it's probably not your last. Work fast and careful. Tropicana Avenue, go. That was such a morale well, apparently boost. Apparently, Officer Garvey stopped to help a stranded motorist. I like how this or cop is always the same guy. To serve and protect. <laughs> and sometimes, this is the reward. We'll never have more important work to do than this. Hey, before we get started, I want to introduce myself. I'm Nick Stokes. Good to meet you, Nick. I've heard a lot of good things about you from Sarah, so Aww. let's work quick to nail this creep. Let's do it. But yeah, seriously, first officer on the scene. Where's he gone? It's always the same guy. By the way, we should, uh, yeah, let's check the body. So. Severe head trauma like this. Something heavy, something hard's probably the weapon. We'll cast to the wound. It'll Would it happen, happen to be... That tire iron by your feet, Nick. Just an idea. Beaten over the head, two gunshot wounds to the chest. <laughs> Man, somebody didn't want Officer Garby walking away from this one. It's just rude. No sign of exit wounds. I believe that is everything we can do here with Officer Garvey. But we do want to check this and get a swab. Just to make sure it's his blood. Maybe it's the killer's. We're going to take this too. Hello, I see a thing. See? Told you. Whoa. Someone could have been holding this tire iron as a weapon. At some point, this thread could have snagged on here if it brushed by their clothes. You think? I can see you're earning your paycheck today. And we'll take that. So then that leaves... 32 caliber mag. Probably Garvey's own piece, but we'll have to confirm that. Well, let's check to make sure it's his prints on it only. And then we're going to take the weapon. It's kind of cool looking weapon. All of the rounds are accounted for. I'd say it wasn't fired recently. So probably not the gun used to shoot him. All right, let's check his so car. This baby away soon, so we need to get to work fast. There could be something important in here. Well, first of all, you can quite clearly see a stain. Your stain, wiped maybe. Be nice to know what it is. Well, we'll find out then. Oh, I think I was meant to do that first. Oh well. Luminol says it's okay. blood. Luminol says we got a blood stain. I just said that. I tried to wipe it off, but. Like the man said, blood tells. Yeah, that sounds like Gil. This is another cop's ID. Jeffrey Deschamps. And check out the date of birth. Deschamps is a 72-year-old cop? I don't think so. It could be. Doesn't look 72-like, but, you know. It's blank, but maybe Greg can lift an imprint off it. Well, let's take it and see what he says. And I think that's everything for now. So, I did say, you know, I can't, this probably go a bit quick. I do apologize, guys, but it's the joys of re-recording. Yes. That was a rather seductive way of saying that. It's like, yes. Welcome to the morgue. Uh, yeah, what was the actual cause of death, then? Despite the power of the blow to the head, the officer was still alive. Unconscious, maybe, but breathing. So the gunshots finished him off. Two bullets in the chest put a stop to that.
Uh, what did you discover about the gunshot wounds? Both bullets entered through the chest. Really? Stippling is consistent with being shot at close to medium range. One struck the left lung and lodged there. Other hit the left second rib, deflected down through the stomach into the upper intestines. We recovered both rounds. Thank you. Okay, what was the time of death? Pretty recent. There's some early rigor mortis, I'd say no more than three or four hours ago. Okay, what caused the head trauma? Pulling the scalp back revealed Ew. the basal skull fracture. You need that mental image. Conjunctible hemorrhaging. We have a forceful blow to the head. Hard, slender object, like an iron rod. Or a tire iron. Well, I'd say it's a pretty good match to the skull fracture. Really? Was that it? Alright, Grego! What do you need? I need you to check that. The cast of the wound indicates something slim, tubular. Yep, which we knew. So you figure this blood came from the killer? No, I don't second guess you, Greg. I'd never hear the end of it. Wise move. We have a boar here, casting no aspersions on present company. This is Suscrofa, blood of a wild boar. Pig blood. Okay, what about the blood in the car? Pig's blood again. Genetically okay. identical, and a decay rate comparison is a match. Uh, this? Cotton. Red dye present, but faded. Got another sample I can compare it to? Not yet. I'm assuming you won't tell us anything Sorry. about that. Yeah. Can't do anything with that. Uh, the ID card. This ID isn't legit. It's a forgery. Pretty good one, too. Okay, so we've got a forged ID card. I used an electrostatic detection apparatus to see if the previous page's message made a big impression. Sort of like I do. Sure. Here's what came up. Tropicana Avenue. Car on roadside. Needs assistance. So that's basically him making a note of the calls. He got it. Uh, tire iron. There were a few tiny spatters of blood on the tire iron. Matches Garvey's. So most likely... The weapon used to hit him over the head. His gun. Garvey's weapon, clean barrel, fully loaded, not fired recently. Okay, so that was not used to shoot him. The bullets. Those oldies but baddies. 44 caliber. Nice. 30 to 35 years ripe. Of course, they could be reloads. Do you like me a 44? All right. Well, I guess we'll uh, do a little searchy search. All right. Well, this is no shock. Our dead officer's yep. prints are on his own weapon. Okay, well, it's still good to check. Uh, I believe we can... Whoops. Let's search Jeffrey Deschamps. Hello. I really don't like where this is going. Officer Jeffrey Deschamps killed along the roadside helping a motorist with a flat 30 years ago. Unsolved. M.O.? Deja vu all over again. A tire iron. Pool of blood. Blank notepad. Murder weapon. A 44 Magnum. In the grass under the patrol car. Only upside, it's a lead. We should check the crime scene again. See if there's a gun under where the car was. Kind of makes me feel bad that it doesn't let you check under the car. Because, I mean... In a real scenario, you would have checked that before the car was even moved. But because it's a game, you can only click on the highlighted parts. Oh well. But yeah, let's go get it. Looks like they towed the patrol car. Sure away. enough. We got another 144. Oh, I like that. 44 Magnum. Could be 70s era. Serial numbers filed off. Gunpowder in the barrel. Mag short three rounds. One in the chamber. Probably fired recently. Twice. This is a staged crime scene. Kind of had noticed. Uh, detection. Yeah, let's see. There's no prints here. Okay, just, you know, you gotta check. Alright, is there anything else now the car's moved? I don't think there is. Right, Greg. Are you ready for this? Some freaks on crimechat.com knowing way too much about our cop killing. Hit the lab computer. I sent a link to the desktop to get you directly into the chat. How is this already leaked? No, 
not a lot of people will, but you might. Alibor, you're a twisted man, but I like it. I'm going to see if I can get here before they clean the crimes down a lot myself. Ciao. Where did Alibor go? A cop killing. Most heinous of crimes. Quite frankly, this, one, this one's a masterpiece. Alibor went to look for himself. The cop murder I'm hearing on the scanners. That was you? Sick. We can't find this guy fast enough. Take a drive to shopping. You might see if it might remind you of it. Okay. Love to solve. <laughs> Fair enough. Don't think that helped us that much. Well, it probably did actually. Yeah, check out this gun. Be careful with it. It's a nice gun. Here's the ballistics report on our late officer's wounds. This 44 mag's a perfect match. You have your murder weapon. Nice. Unfortunately, it has no prints. All right. Let's go see brass. What can I do for you? Uh, we need to know the domain owner for crimechat.com. Sure, I'll cross your T's and dot your comms for you. Thank you. Site owner Jack Riley, apartment on Mountain Vista Street, crosses Tropicana. That's pretty close. Close to our crime scene. It is indeed. Alright, let's go see Mr. Jack Riley. Mr. Riley? Jack Riley? That's me. What's up? We were with the Las Vegas Crime Lab. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions about this shooting near your place. What do you know about the killing? Probably about as much as you, thanks to Sutherland. Uh, maybe even a bit more since you probably don't study classic unsolved murders like the Deschamps case. <laughs> Look at me. What do you know about Sutherland? The same as the other 4,000 some anonymous users who post at my site. Zippo. They don't use real names, you know? Do you own a 44 Magnum? You probably already know I do if you checked your records. But you should also know I reported it stolen a few months back. At a party and somebody got in my gun case and helped him or herself. As for suspects, I had 35 of my closest friends over. Okay, so who's the 35 people? No? Really, we're not going to ask that? Is there a way to track Sutherland down? You know there is, if you're a CSI or squad. I don't like this guy. IP addresses identify the computer he was using. But I got privacy issues here with my users. No warrant, no IP address. Okay, well, it's a long shot, but can we look around? Listen, I don't mind cooperating, and I got nothing to hide, but I also know my rights. No warrant, no entry. Back in a few minutes. Need me for something? Give me a warrant. Riley's hosting the website where somebody's bragging about this killing, plus Jackie Boy owns a gun that matches the murder weapon. Isn't a judge in town who won't let us check that apartment. Nice. We're back. Hey, <laughs> we have a warrant. What a shock. Cop goes down, so does the Bill of Rights. Go ahead. Go inside. For all the good it'll do you. You could have just helped out. It'd been a lot easier. Captain you don't need to clean up more. Fuel. He seems to have some brand loyalty. Uh, can we get prints? Not very good ones. Just thought it'd be good to have Jack's prints if we can get hold of them. Condensation but, uh, messes with the quality of prints we can lift. Don't know how useful these will be. I don't have anything else to tell you right now. I didn't want to... Why did I go from the can to... What the? This guy's into true crime heavy duty. Sutherland! Whoa. Here's a book by Edwin H. Sutherland, late great criminologist. Okay, I think we know where someone got their username from. All right, computer. Damn. Sutherland again. Sicko was at the crime scene before we went back and found the murder weapon. Man, this guy moves fast. But we have his IP address. Guy greets us with the warmth of a cobra, but check this out. It's like he's our biggest fan. This guy is a bit of a nut job, if you ask me. I don't think there's anything else we can check. How can I track down I know how to track down Sutherland. Let's go... We should go to the lab. Because we've got prints to check. We're not going to get much from them, I yes. think. But, you know, it's always worth checking every bit of evidence. Yeah, nothing for them. Uh, hey, you can't scan that into the computer. 
Really, you can't scan an IP address into the computer. Logic. All right, perhaps you're gonna have to this help us out with this one. starting to leak out to the news thanks to our friends at CrimeChat.com. Great. Tell me you got something good. Got an IP address. We can track the computer he posted from. Computer Lab UNLV, classroom building complex, where they teach criminal justice. He's hoping we'll be teaching some creep a class in that real soon. Fingers crossed. Alrighty. Does Jack Riley have any kind of connection with the university? Let's ask the magic screen. Oh yeah. Graduate. Ten years back. Criminal justice major. That explains why he's such a nerd. Alright. Let's go to the university. Professor Franklin? That you? Hello. Nice glasses. Nick Stokes? <laughs> well, look at you. I'd ask how you are, but that's obvious. I thought you were still at Rice, sir. I didn't know you were at UNLV. Class is out, Nick. You don't have to call me, sir. Uh, the department here had an opening in theory reconstruction. How could I refuse? By well, saying no? The book. Literally. You'd be a boon to any faculty. Very kind of you to say, Nick. Especially since you're not fishing for a grade. This time. And I understood you to be working in Dallas. CSI level one. Problems? No, no, I could have stayed, but it was time for a change, you know, and the chance to work with Gil Grissom. He's and pretty cool. out of the shadow of a certain Supreme Court justice also named Stokes? Maybe just a little. Have to envy you, my boy. Working in the field, solving real crimes. <laughs> Not some premature fossil working the academia beat for 25 years. Decent CSIs aren't that hard to come by. Now, great teachers, that's a rarity. He's got a point with that one. my self-esteem a world of good, Nick. But that's not why you dropped by, is it? I wish. Thing is, we have a cop killing. And believe it or not, there's a link to the university. You could help by answering a few questions. I'm assuming I'm asking the questions out now you've had your buddy buddy moment. Alright, which computer is linked to this IP address? This one, right here. Helpful. Who used it recently? Earlier in the day, I, I couldn't say. But I just met with a student, John Laskin, going over some coursework. And uh, he was on that machine. Not, not to tell you how to do your work, but dusting for prints would be rather pointless. With all the traffic in here. Well, who said anything about prints? Did I look like I was going to go dust it for prints? What's his area of research? Blaskin has been digging into various unsolved crimes. Uh, promising student. Bright. Doing well on my course. Okay, where can we find him? I believe he lives on campus. Surely your department has access to the university's housing database. Tracking him down should be child's play. I'm not speaking that. I just asked where, so we knew where to start looking. <sighs> Stop assuming! Who would access this computer lab? Every lab on this floor is strictly for criminal justice students. And the computer lab is reserved for grad school level only. Okay. What kind of access do you have to the computer lab? If you need to get in for further investigation, I can help. I have keys to the lab and the building itself. 24-hour access. Good to know. Uh, did the Shamps case, what do you know? A little surprised you'd have to ask that question. That was my first big success. I wrote the book about that great unsolved case. Do you need my help? Just asking routine questions. I don't believe there's much we can actually look at, but we do Some notice. Some not so good at cleaning up after themselves, but more importantly, We've now found the same brand of soda in both the computer lab and Riley's apartment. So we've got a link there. Don't think we can take the It might be hard to get good prints from a can, but it's worth a shot. It is indeed. Whoops. I can't tell you anything else at this moment. Okay, uh, that didn't really give us a lot. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, nothing much. Now, uh, can we get anything on these? Probably not. Nope. Uh, I doubt we'd manage to get a comparison either. No. Okay, worth a try. Uh, and what have we learned at the university? 
yeah, check out John Laskin for us. No problem. It's the best lead we got. Criminal justice grad student. No publications. Lives on campus. All right, can we bring him in? Oh yeah, we'll enroll him in my class. Now this is something. You know, studying this stuff is one thing. Books, abstract theory, famous cases. But this? A real interrogation room? Real CSI. God, we've got a fanboy. Real murder. You want to help? Absolutely. Interrogate away. Well, at least he's enthusiastic, I suppose. Have you changed your clothes recently? No. Why? You find threads or something? Would you mind if we took a thread sample? Well... Sure, no prob, but just be careful. I'm just a guy scratching by in a partial scholarship. Don't have much of a clothes budget. I shall be careful, because I can understand that. Uh, yeah. Okay, are you familiar with CrimeChat.com? I log on now and then, but like any chat room, it's just people BSing. I got mounds of coursework, plus I'm a TA, you know, supervising labs. Not much free time. Okay. Uh, where were you during the time of the murder? Monitoring a midterm. Intro to corrections, 30 undergrads. Hey, does this mean I'm a suspect? Cool. I, I mean, since I didn't do it, cool. This is like field research. You study way too much. What is the focus of your research? Hey, it sounds dry, but it's fascinating stuff. A longitudinal study of criminal investigators and pathologists who've worked long term on unsolved cases. Does it include the Shumps case? Oh, yeah, that's a classic. Unsolved for 30 years, you know. Can't imagine chasing a case for that long. Hey, this was great. Real honor. You're welcome. You find that killer. Drown that sucker in evidence. Can't decide if I like him or not. Um. What have we learnt now? I don't know. Oh, we've got a thread sample! Hey guys, what's up? Using the microspectral photometer, we get a fiber match on your red thread, but not a color match. Similar sweater though, probably an older one. Alright, that was good to know. Email from Brass, Sutherland is chatting again. Every cop in town's heading over to UNLV to try and catch him in the act. Including you guys. Go already. All right, I'm going. I'm going. Damn. Well, he was here. We're here now. So let's process this place like a crime scene. This guy is fast. Hello, red jacket. Like the Alaskan kids, but older. Let's process this baby for evidence, then get it over to Greg. Little white flakes. Oh, I thought Probably I was going to take a thread from the owner. We can't use that here. What do you want me to use? Am I zooming in on it? Oh, okay. Now can I use this? Can I take a thread? We can't use that here. Fine. Just take the jacket then. Someone is now missing a college jacket. Oh. See what I mean though? Same guy. Is there nothing else we can check? Really? Just that? Fine. Back to Greg. Hey guys. What the up? hell was that? Tell us about the dandruff. Warm up the thermocycler to amplify the DNA on this dandruff flake. But I need some suspect samples for comparison. Okay, we can sort that. And the jacket. Now this sample does match the thread on the tire iron. Find the guy who used to be inside this sweater. You got yourself a link to the crime scene. Is there like a label on it that says... Ah, uh, nuts. I don't know what I'm doing now. This is about how far I got and then had to re-record anyway. So, brass? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just because this guy was Nick's teacher doesn't give him a pass. Go back out to that school and see what his DNA teaches us. Okay. 
We got plenty on him for a warrant. Go to his place and get your sample. And lastly, Laskin's alibi checked out. He was supervising an exam. Cross this guy off the suspect list. Okay, well, at least we know. Uh, let's, let's see Mr. Riley first. We have a warrant to take a DNA sample. So, it's not enough you make me aid and abet you guys invading my website visitors' privacy. You gotta invade the inside of my mouth, too? We can invade somewhere else if you wanted. Any other indignities while you're at it? Full Don't tempt me, boy. Maybe? You got the gloves for it. I'm going to leave before I slap him. Alright, Mr. Franklin. Okay, what do you know about the Garvey killing? Just what I read in the news. My phone has been ringing off the hook. Reporters asking me to comment due to my expertise with the Deschamps case. Is that why you're here? Uh, where were you when the crime was being committed? Well, in my office. Marking some papers. Can anyone substantiate that? A teaching assistant, maybe? A fellow professor that dropped by? No. I go to my office at that hour specifically for solitude. I was quite alone. Not the best alibi, as you would know. Uh, we'd like to take a DNA sample. For what reason? Surely I'm not a suspect in your investigation. You know how it is, sir. Just covering the bases. We're back to sir, are we? And what if I said you need a warrant to perform that affront? I'd say we do have a warrant. Well, I was just making sure you weren't getting sloppy, Nick. Sure. You know, taking advantage of our... <sighs> anyway, go right ahead. All right, so now we've got some DNA samples. Greg! Hey, guys. What's up? Right. Trace. Jack Riley. I compared Riley's DNA to the dandruff flake. That flake is not your guy. Okay, that crosses him off, I believe. Franklin. The professor's DNA markers match the dandruff sample. Looks like the next class Franklin teaches is going to be high school equivalency to the other inmates. Okay. Uh, I think we need to go see Brass. What can I do for you? Professor, F do we want to talk to him first? I can't tell you anything else at this moment. Okay, fine. I want an arrest warrant. The prof's DNA matches the dandruff on the sweater. Sweater fiber matches the thread snagged on the tire iron. No more plan hooky from justice for this creep. Let's get him. Finally, I'm being asked to consult on this case, being the expert. I uh, know. Frankly, I'd expected you to call sooner, but I'm happy to help you now. Sure. Consult with us on this cop killing. Consider the evidence. Which all points in your direction, Professor. Is this your sweater? I believe that's mine. Getting a little long in the tooth, but then who among us isn't? Throw it away if you like. We'll bag it instead. Whatever for. It's evidence. You bag evidence, remember? Tell us about your research on the Deschamps case. Ah, the Deschamps case. A true classic in the annals of unsolved crimes. I'm the great expert on the case, and even I couldn't come up with a solution. Not a single worthwhile clue is found. The proverbial perfect crime. Why was the fiber from your sweater found at the crime scene? Oh, certainly not. No fiber was found at the Deschamps crime scene. Not at the Deschamps crime scene, but at the Garby crime scene, sir, there was. On the tire iron. Young man, you don't need to call me sir. I appreciate the respect, but we're professionals here. Feel free to call me Edwin. Edwin? As in Edwin Sutherland? You must be new in the field if you don't recognize me, young man. Edwin Sutherland. The most acclaimed criminologist of all time. I thought you but said he then, died. Aren't you a student of that pathetic, isolated old academic? What the? That miserable failure, Professor Franklin. What just happened? Oh, this officer who was killed recently. You'd like me to consult on the case? I must admit I've been giving it some thought. Why don't you share those thoughts with us, Professor? Sutherland? Glad to, young man. You see, this homicide is quite similar to the classic Deschamps killing. And I must admit, your mentor, Professor Franklin, did some respectable research on that case. 
for a man of such average capabilities and limited intellect. Or did he? You see, your perpetrator was recreating the Deschamps murder, undoubtedly. The killer would have faked a flat tire and waited for help to come. It would only take a few minutes. Even in this tawdry day and age, the police serve and protect. The killer would have allowed the officer to draw close in order to take a good hard swing at him. But apparently he didn't notice a tiny thread snagging on the tire iron. The incriminating clue. When he was down, he finished him with a couple of quick rounds to the chest. Fast. Relatively painless. The clues from the Deschamps case, of course, had to be replicated. The killer left a bit of blood near the body. Crudely symbolic pig's blood. Gun under the car, few pages off the notepad. I made sure this was clear by publishing my findings on that quaint crimechat.com. But one must wonder how he would have so intimately known the details surrounding the original crime. Could he have been responsible for both? What? Can we speak to Professor... F okay. Nick? Nick? Well, seeing you, it's... It's like seeing my own ghost. My own long-lost conscience. Something you want to get off your chest, Professor? I... I just can't live with it anymore. My entire career. Built on one great lie. I was just starting out, wanting to make a name for myself, but... You must understand. It was theoretical. What was, Professor? Killing that officer. Garvey? Deschamps. I wanted to see a crime from the inside out. I suppose every criminalist ponders the perfect crime. It was motiveless. Or at least the motive was so obscure that... Anyway, I did it. All those years ago. You killed Officer Deschamps and built your reputation as an expert on a crime you committed yourself. And now you've done it again. What, try and recapture some of that old glory? Yes. Yes. Nick, please. I couldn't help myself. Please, do something. Make sure I never do anything like this again. Help me. Professor, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, I think you can I get a, a few plea for that. On your last case. Franklin apparently was racked with guilt, and the Sutherland subpersonality evolved to help resolve it. But it was your skills that bridged their gap and exposed Franklin for who he really was. Good job. So, multiple personality disorder caused by traumatic event. Good work. Only a few things you left unexamined. God damn it. God damn it. How did that... Oh well, never mind. There you go, guys. Case 3 solved in relatively fast time, actually, because I'd done most of it anyway before I had to re-record it. But thank you for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye! Wow. I took a lot of breath.